Welcome to the Deep Dive, where we plunge into the latest breakthroughs and bring you the most fascinating insights from the world of science. Today, we're talking about those incredible moments, you know, when groundbreaking discoveries happen, not through meticulous planning, but by sheer exhilarating chance. Imagine scientists diligently working towards one goal, only to stumble upon something, well, entirely unprecedented, something that fundamentally challenges everything we thought we knew. And that's exactly what happened recently with the accidental creation of a brand new gold compound. Yes, gold, a discovery that's making waves across the scientific community because it flips our understanding of this famously uh, inert metal right on its head. And in this deep dive, we're going to unpack this remarkable find, taking you right to the heart of the experiment. Right. And to truly set the stage for you, this wasn't some simple lab accident, not at all. This extraordinary feat was achieved by an international team of researchers, primarily led by scientists at the U.S. Department of Energy's SLAC National Accelerator Laboratory. They were conducting their experiments at a truly cutting-edge facility, the European XFEL, that's the X-ray Free Electron Laser, uh, located over in Germany. So our mission in this deep dive is really to guide you through the surprising journey of how this accidental gold hydride came into existence, what it actually is, and maybe most importantly, why its mere existence is a total game changer for fields as diverse as, say, planetary science and the very quest for fusion energy. We're here to give you that shortcut, that insight to understanding this genuinely surprising breakthrough so you'll leave well-informed and maybe a little amazed. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning, or rather the, their beginning. You might expect a team of brilliant scientists at a you know, state-of-the-art facility like that. You'd think they'd be meticulously planning to synthesize a new gold compound, right? You know, trying to break new ground with a noble metal. Uh, yeah, you'd think so, but you'd be completely wrong. Their primary objective couldn't have been further from it. They weren't looking for new gold compounds at all. Their initial goal was actually to investigate how hydrocarbons, those fundamental molecules made of just carbon and hydrogen, how they transform into something much more valuable and structured diamonds. And they wanted to do this under really, really extreme pressures and heat, sort of mimicking conditions deep inside planets. Diamonds, not uh, golden surprises. All right. Okay, so how do you even begin to make diamonds in a lab? I mean, that sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie. It definitely feels that way sometimes. The setup they used was incredibly sophisticated, quite complex. The researchers took tiny hydrocarbon samples and compressed them using a device called a diamond anvil cell. Now, to give you a sense of scale, this device allowed them to achieve pressures exceeding those found deep inside Earth's mantle. We're talking about millions of times atmospheric pressure. It's like uh, st stacking hundreds of elephants on a single postage stamp. Just immense pressure. Then, to really push things to the limit, they exposed these super compressed samples to incredibly intense rapid bursts of X-ray pulses. These came from the European XFEL. And this wasn't just about pressure. The X-rays heated the samples to temperatures soaring above 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Think of it as creating a mini star or a planetary core right there in the lab for, well, fractions of a second. Wow. Okay. And here's where gold, of all things, enters the picture. But it wasn't the star of the show, was it? You said it had a more um, mundane role. What was it assigned in this elaborate diamond-making drama? That's right. Gold was initially cast in a very humble sort of supporting role. The team used a very thin layer of gold foil, its job. It was simply meant to absorb those powerful x-rays and then transfer that intense heat efficiently to the hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons, you see, are pretty bad at absorbing x-rays on their own. They're too light. So gold was essentially just a high-tech heat conductor, a little helper in the process, nothing more. Right. So you have gold, famous for its inertness, its unreactivity, basically known for minding its own chemical business, sitting there absorbing x-rays under conditions more extreme than we can possibly imagine. It's like the reliable stage hand in a play just doing its job quietly. What could possibly go wrong? Or perhaps unexpectedly right? And this is where the story takes a fascinating, completely unscripted turn. Because alongside the anticipated diamond formation, and yes, they did make diamonds, which was cool in itself, that was the original goal after all, but the researchers observed something entirely new, something completely unanticipated. They found evidence of solid binary gold hydride, just gold and hydrogen somehow combined into a stable compound. What's truly astonishing here really is just how much of a shock this discovery was, not just to them, but to the wider scientific community. Gold is legendary for its chemical stability, its unreactivity. That's why we call it a noble metal, right? It's not just because it's valuable, but because it resists corrosion, it doesn't easily form compounds, it effectively shrugs off chemical attacks under normal circumstances. And that's precisely why it was chosen as the x-ray absorber in these experiments. It was assumed it would just sit there and do its job without interfering chemically. As Mungo Frost, who's 
who's a staff scientist at SLAC and the lead author of the study, he put it perfectly. He said, and I quote, it was unexpected because gold is typically chemically very boring and unreactive. That's why we use it as an x-ray absorber in these experiments, end quote. So this discovery, which they published in Anjuante Kemi International Edition back on August 4th, 2025, it fundamentally demonstrates something truly profound, that chemical behavior can shift dramatically, really dramatically under these extreme environments. It genuinely challenges our conventional understanding of elemental reactivity. It makes you question the basics. So what you're saying is that the fundamental rules of chemistry we've all learned the ones that tell us gold is basically a lone wolf, doesn't like to react. They might have a secret clause like an asterisk saying, unless you apply insane pressure and heat. Right. It's completely rewriting what's possible, right? An element that's practically a synonym for stability suddenly showing this completely different, surprisingly active side when pushed to its absolute limits. It's like finding out your quiet, predictable neighbor is actually a secret superhero with incredible powers they only use in a you know planetary core level crisis. Huh, that's a pretty good analogy, actually. It forces us to reconsider the very nature of chemical bonding and reactivity when you introduce such immense energy and pressure into the system. It implies that what we consider stable might just be stable within a very narrow range of everyday conditions we experience. Outside that range, all bets are off. Okay, so this gold hydride exists, which is mind-blowing in itself. Yeah. But what exactly is it? And what makes it special beyond just being a chemical oddity, beyond just existing? Well, at its simplest, solid binary gold hydride is a compound made up solely of gold atoms and hydrogen atoms. Nothing else. But the truly fascinating aspect, the real secret sauce, lies in the state of the hydrogen within that compound. Under the extreme conditions generated during the experiment, those super high pressures and temperatures we talked about, the hydrogen existed in a dense, what they call a superionic state. Now, what this means, try to visualize this. Imagine a rigid fixed lattice formed by the gold atoms, like a very stable metallic sponge holding its shape. But the hydrogen atoms within that lattice weren't static at all. They weren't locked into position. They moved freely, almost like a liquid or maybe even a plasma, through the solid gold structure. So imagine that that sponge holding its shape, but the water inside it is sloshing around, completely free-flowing, not bound to specific spots in the sponge material. And this superionic behavior, this mobile hydrogen, drastically enhanced the electrical conductivity of the gold hydride. It gave it some very unique and active properties. That's incredible. A liquid-like hydrogen flowing through solid gold. Okay. But wait, hydrogen is the lightest element, right? It's famously hard to see or study directly, especially with x-rays, because it barely scatters them. So if these hydrogen atoms were zipping around almost invisible to the x-rays, how on earth did they actually observe what the hydrogen was doing inside the gold? That sounds like an impossible task. Ah, you've hit on a crucial challenge, and it's where the team's ingenuity really shone through. It was a very clever approach. The ingenious solution was to use the much heavier gold atoms as a kind of proxy or a, um, a witness, if you will, because the superionic hydrogen atoms were interacting so intimately and dynamically with the gold lattice, their movements and behavior actually affected how the gold lattice itself scattered the x-rays. They perturbed the gold structure subtly. So it was an indirect method, but incredibly effective, almost like watching the ripples on a pond to understand what's moving underneath the surface, even if you can't see the fish directly. Mungo Frost explained it perfectly when he said, and again I quote, we can use the gold lattice as a witness for what the hydrogen is doing. Hmm. So this method offers a truly unique window into studying dense atomic hydrogen, which, as you pointed out, is notoriously difficult to probe directly because it's just so light. Wow, using the gold itself to spy on the hydrogen. Very clever. So essentially, this lab experiment, this little setup with diamond anvils and x-rays, it's giving us a sneak peek into the very hearts of distant planets, maybe. Or even the engines of stars. This isn't just a lab curiosity, then, is it? What does this all mean? Not just for our understanding of gold, but for our broader understanding of the universe and maybe even our future here on Earth. Absolutely. This is far, far from just a curiosity. If we connect this to the bigger picture, this lab discovery has some really profound implications. It connects to massive cosmic phenomena. For instance, this research provides vital new insights into the interiors of certain planets. Think ice giants like Neptune or Uranus, maybe even gas giants. Dense hydrogen makes up a significant portion of their composition. Studying its behavior here on Earth 
in the lab under controlled conditions, it could unlock secrets about those foreign worlds that are otherwise completely inaccessible to us. And beyond planets, it offers new insights into nuclear fusion processes, the kind that power stars like our own sun. And crucially, understanding these processes better could directly inform efforts to develop technology to harness fusion energy here on Earth, you know, that potential path to clean, virtually limitless energy that scientists have been chasing for decades. And then there's the broader chemical significance. These findings strongly suggest there's potentially a vast amount of new chemistry just waiting to be discovered, especially under extreme conditions where the incredible effects of temperature and pressure start competing with and even overriding the conventional chemical rules we thought were absolute. That's truly game-changing potential then. Planetary science, fusion energy, all from accidentally zapping some gold. It also highlights something really important about this exotic compound you mentioned. It's incredibly transient in nature. This gold hydride isn't something you can just synthesize, scoop up, and put in a jar for later study, right? It appears to be stable only at these incredibly high pressures and temperatures. The moment it cools down or the pressure drops, the gold and hydrogen just separate. Go back to their normal selves. That's exactly right. It's a critical distinction, and it's what makes studying these extreme condition materials so challenging but also so exciting. The gold hydride appears to be what we call metastable or perhaps only stable under those specific extreme conditions. When you release the pressure or lower the temperature, poof, it decomposes back into gold and hydrogen. So the very extreme conditions themselves aren't just an environment for its creation. They are, in a very real sense, an intrinsic part of the compound's definition. You need those extremes for it to even exist. But the research didn't just stop at the discovery of this uh, ephemeral compound. That would have been amazing enough. The team also developed a robust simulation framework to model these states theoretically, to understand why it forms. Lead investigator Siegfried Glenzer highlighted its significance. He stated, it's important that we can experimentally produce and model these states under these extreme conditions. He added, these simulation tools could be applied to model other exotic material properties in extreme conditions. So this simulation framework itself is a huge leap forward. It allows us to predict and explore what other elements, maybe other seemingly boring elements, might do under similar pressure cookers. That truly underscores the idea, then, that this accidental discovery isn't just about gold acting weirdly. It's about opening up an entirely new frontier in material science, maybe even computational chemistry. It's enhancing our ability to predict and then explore the behavior of matter in conditions that mimic the crushing hearts of planets or the explosive cores of stars. We're not just observing anymore. We're beginning to understand how to maybe build materials for these extreme environments, learn from them, and maybe even design new materials that might only be stable under very specific controlled extreme conditions, things we haven't even imagined yet. Precisely. This research offers an entirely new avenue for exploring chemistry that was previously thought impossible, or at least highly improbable particularly for elements traditionally considered unreactive, like gold. It's a powerful reminder that our chemistry textbooks aren't fixed, unchanging documents. They're constantly being updated by curious minds, by new experiments, and by cutting-edge technology. It really pushes the boundaries of elemental possibility of what we think atoms can do. And what an incredible journey we've taken today. It really is remarkable. From a team simply trying to make diamonds, using gold as just a heating element, to the accidental creation of gold hydride, a compound that completely defies conventional chemistry and exists only under the most extreme conditions imaginable. It's a true testament to the unpredictable nature of scientific exploration and, let's be honest, the sheer joy of finding something totally unexpected. Absolutely. What's truly illuminating here, I think, is how these unexpected discoveries, often born from careful observation, yes, but also a willingness to question assumptions when the data doesn't fit how they can unlock vast new areas of knowledge. This work fundamentally encourages us to rethink the limits of what we think we know about elements and their behavior, about what's reactive and what's inert. It truly expands our understanding of the universe's chemical possibilities and reminds us that some of the most profound insights come from the most surprising places, from the things you weren't looking for. It really does. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? What other kinds of secrets might other supposedly boring or unreactive elements be hiding? Are they just waiting for the right extreme conditions, the right pressure, the right temperature, the right laser blast to reveal their true surprising nature? Well, this deep dive really shows us how serendipity, that happy accident, combined with cutting edge technology and a healthy dose of scientific curiosity, can literally rewrite the textbooks. 
And maybe it raises an important question for all of us, something to ponder. Mm. What other fundamental rules of chemistry or physics or biology, for that matter, might be waiting out there, waiting to be challenged and ultimately transformed by the next accidental discovery? Imagine the materials we could create or the cosmic mysteries we could solve if we just keep pushing these boundaries, keep looking closely, even when things don't go as planned. Exactly. A fantastic thought to end on. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the unexpected, the unusual, and the absolutely groundbreaking reactivity of gold. We hope you're as fascinated by this accidental chemistry as we are.